how people get hooked up with me on Facebook. Because some of them I request them as a friend, but some of them, I don't know. Because if you're not preaching Jesus and him crucified, I don't want to hear what you got to say. People need healing. People need and prayer and you. They're about to die. But if you're sowing in me, I speak a word to heal you. I don't know why God made me an apostle like this. But I'm just wild enough to say what that said the Lord. Okay, let me get back to normal. <laughs> Go with me to John 11 and 39. But let's go, let's go, we're gonna we're gonna go up and start a little. Okay, here we go. See this devil don't want me to say nothing about this. Okay, okay. I'm learning this little thing here. Y'all know the story, all right? Yeah. yeah. It's a very familiar story. I haven't heard it preached five hundred times. Now a certain man was ill. Lazarus of Bethlehem, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent to him saying, Lord, whom you love is ill. <laughs> but when Jesus heard it, he said, the illness does not lead to death. Mm. Uh, see, this is supernatural, you see. It, this is a purpose here. This is a supernatural purpose. He says, this illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your situation comes upon you so that the glory of God may be manifested. Uh, he not, here's somebody that said he's ill. But Jesus is not in a hurry. If somebody would call us and say, you know, Apostle, at least I hope, uh, Apostle Zill, he's over here, the prayer warriors need to come and lay hands on him. But the true prayer warrior may say, I don't need to go. From where I sit or where I stand, he shall be healed. God may show you that he's going through this for my glory yeah. so that I can raise him up. Mm -hmm. He don't like it because I sure didn't like it. But he was going through it for the glory of God. It says, so he went on and he said, this illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God so the Son of Man may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister, Lazarus. I'm saying, and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, <laughs> he stayed, what? Two days longer in the place where he was. Jesus loved Martha. Jesus loved Lazarus, but when he heard that he was ill, he added two more days to where he was at. In other words, I have 
the supernatural powers to raise him up from where he's at so I don't need to rush to cut short my mission. I'll be there when I should be there. I'll be there in the right timing. I'll be there in the right season. Sometimes we are rushed to do a thing. And we call God to pull back. And we never get the situation resolved because of who we are. And we are leaning to our own understanding and we are not recognizing who he is. We, re we recognize that we can speak in tongues. That's one of the things that gets a lot of people in trouble right there. Okay, let me go on. He stayed two days. Then, after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to, to, to stone you. And you are going there again? See, this is the human of them. Yeah. Apostle, they don't cuss you out over there. And you still going? <coughs> they don't like you. They're mad with you. But you still love them? They talking about you. They backbiting you. They trying to harm you. But you still love them? You still praying for them? That's because of your supernatural purpose. You don't fall in to what they are doing. Come in, woman of God. You mean to tell me you going through the midst of a storm mm -hmm. and you have the audacity to pray for your enemy? <laughs> you have the audacity to pray for the one that's despitefully using you? You have the audacity to try to, to try to pray for the one you're praying for the one that's trying to harm you? You, you, you have the audacity to pray for the one who said that you are not who you say you are. You have the audacity to pray for the one who say that you are not who God say you are. Wow. You have that. Mm -hmm. Well, okay then. You have supernatural purpose. <laughs> and you know it. Amen. See, if you have supernatural purpose, it doesn't matter who you are. Come here, woman of God. No, 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 no. Right there, right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. <laughs> you mean to tell me that God is getting ready to elevate you and they have the audacity to say, oh, no, she ain't no prophet. Oh, no, God don't use her. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, a woman supposed to sit down. Oh, a woman supposed to do that. Oh, no. You mean to tell me you got the audacity to obey God and be a prophet? Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? Hey, come here. <laughs> I got, a, I got a hit up on Facebook that say, "You may be an apostle, but can't no woman be no prophet." They don't know. I'm telling you everything. I'm telling you now. Hallelujah. When you got that dash to be a prophet, huh? Yes. When you a woman? Yes. All right. You tell. You mean to tell me you are not afraid to obey God? I'm not. God said, "You're gonna pour out His spirit in all flesh." He said that. Tell me he can use you as he used Deborah. Yes, he can. 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 Yes, he can.
Yes, you mean to tell me you can hear things from God? Yes, I can. You mean to tell me you know how to speak the word of God? Yes, I can. You mean to tell me you know how to preach and teach the word of God? Yes, I can. You a woman? I'm a woman. Bless the Lord. <laughs> I tell you, I just say what God say right. is good. Right. Okay, hold on a second. I'm having the anointing, I'm going to blow your mind with something now. I'm going to blow your mind with something now. But then I'm going to break it down. Is that all right? Yeah. Having the anointing is not the same thing as moving in the glory. Amen. You may come to an anointed service in God, mm -hmm. but it does not mean that you're operating in the glory. Amen. Mm -hmm. The glory is a different realm. Mm -hmm. The glory only shows up when there's supernatural purpose. Mm -hmm. The glory doesn't show up on just anybody. Amen. God said he will pour out his spirit upon what? Our oh, flesh. Okay. Not the glory. Oh, yeah. Everybody can't receive the glory. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't operate in the glory. Mm -hmm. You may have the anointing, mm -hmm. but you can't operate in the glory. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't understand when someone starts talk, talking about the glory or talking about the supernatural. You don't understand it because you are not positioned in a position to operate under the glory, so you don't understand the glory. If you don't know what a thing is, you don't understand the thing. Mm -hmm. That's true. I can't go and stand up in a classroom and teach some first graders because I don't have that patience. <laughs> I look at y'all can get these little mean rascals. <laughs> oh, I knock them out. So God knows not to put me in front of no little first grade. Okay. He knows not to send me to school to be no teacher. Okay. That's your gift. <laughs> and you. <laughs> Having the anointing is not the same thing as moving in the door, which includes all of the attributes. The anointing is part of God operating through us. Let, let me say that slowly. The anointed is part of God operating through you or through us, okay? The anointing is one aspect of his power because there are many aspects of God's power. God's power in the area of ministry is called the anointing. Let me say that again. God aspect, God power in the area of ministry is called the anointing. The power of God in the area of his called authority. Now, the power of God in the area of the territory is called dominion, which is a higher level of his power. Dominion is operating in the glory of God. Amen. Dominion is operating in the supreme move of God. <laughs> Dominion is operating in the supreme authority of God. What is supreme? Supernatural. Amen. That's why this ministry is different. That's why it's very difficult for any and everybody to come and sit down in this ministry and stay here because the power is so great. The angels are posted here. The authority is so great. So great. The supreme authority is in this house. Amen. Everybody that has an anointing that walks in the door recognize the supreme authority. Yes. 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 It's different here. Because we operate under the anointing, but we also operate under the glory. Yes, yes, yes. 
Because we walk in God's supernatural ability. What's on me flows down to you. Yes, yes. I don't have to come in here and jump and fight and lay hands because y'all have the authority to do it. The supreme authority. Yes. Let me let me finish this and I'm gonna sit down. Is that all right? Is that all right? Is that all right? Go with me to 2 Corinthians. Fifth chapter. Okay. Four and, four and five. But before we get there, let me read this to you. Let me break something down. He does not, he does not want when he wants anyone, any he wants without depending on our faith and gift and anointing. It is God doing his work without bringing in a, a, a particular a participation. It is God doing supernatural work without bringing in participation of humans. When God moves supernaturally, it is him doing his work without your participation. The problem is, is that we want to participate and we want to do what God wants to do. And because we don't want him to get the glory, we want to get credit. Wow. Wow. We want somebody to say, man, did you see that man? Man, he preached. Man, she preached. She turned the church out. Oh my God. Man, we going out the door. We dancing. We shouting. Then when you get mad at your man, I had a good time. Man, that pre what did they talk about? I don't know. <laughs> you know why? You ain't received nothing. Yeah. Wow. You got your emotions touched. You dancing all over the place. And if you don't change, oh, who got that? Four and five. Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4 and 5. Second chapter. 5 and 4 and 5. Yeah, 4 and 5. 2 yeah, yeah, Corinthians, the second chapter. I'm, I'm, I'm excuse me. The fifth chapter. Wow. Take your time. 2 Corinthians 5 and verses 4 and 5. And 5. For we that are in the this tabernacle do grow, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon the mortality might be swallowed up of life. Correct. Verse 5. Now he that hath wrought, wrought us for the selfsame thing is God who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. read, read the next verse. Verse 6. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Uh, are you confident? Huh? If you leave here today, are you confident that you will be absent from this world, but you will be present with the Lord? I say unto you, a mighty warrior is going to be with Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I tell you, if she could tell you now, she would say, okay. I've done my job. Yeah. My assignment is over. I don't want to go back. Okay. Okay. I'm going to miss y'all. Okay. But get your life right. Because yes. Yes. I am where I want to be. I'm around the throne of my heavenly father. Yes. Yeah. Well, can you say that? Yes. Can you say if you leave today, you are leaving, you'll be taken up into the glory of God? Yes. Hallelujah. There's a woman. Let me finish this. I'm going to finish this. I'm going to finish this. I'm going to finish this. Let's see. I'm going to finish this. I'm going to say. The presence of God cannot be provoked. It cannot be stirred up. 
It cannot be manufactured. We say we're going to stand it up. You can't stir it up. You can't manufacture it. You got to worship him. You got to honor him for who he is. Then you show up, then you show out. He'll heal your body. He knows you need a financial blessing. Can I tell y'all something? I, I can always use myself. Last week, I had an attack of the enemy on the company. And she looked up, I'm telling you. It's not for her to know everything because she is my help me. And my job is to protect her. And I don't need her being worried about that when I know who he is. So we go out. Let me show you how God is. We go out, charge the man this great money, send one check out. Got called the next night. I never seen the air condition shut down the same time every day. Mm. Five days in a row. Wow. Between four and six, wow. it shut down. Mm -hmm. We go out there, he kicked it on, everything worked perfect. Mm. Next day, Call he called. He shut down again at the same time every day. You see what I'm saying? I wanted to tell the man in the natural, you crazy. Mm -hmm. So the man lit in me. Mm -hmm. So God said, shut up and listen. I got ready to say, uh-uh. God, -uh. the Holy Ghost. Be quiet. I'm quiet. Listen. He vented this first spirit. He said, I don't understand it either. I'm an engineer. I da 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 da. All I wanted to fix. I was to the point to say, man, let me give you your money back. You go get somebody else. That's how frustrated I was with it. Because I ain't never been through that in 30 years. I ain't never had no unit to do that. So I said, okay, we'll be out there tomorrow. Went out there. This time, I said, okay. Plug in the motor. Would it run? But what would happen? It would run for about 22, 23 hours and overheat and shut off. Wow. Then when it would cool down, it would come back on. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to ever catch it until it, cool, until it, cool. until it goes. Because you go out and see the thing that ran by a computer. Right. And the computer said, oh, everything working fine. Mm -hmm. Okay? He said, you need to change the computer. I said, we did. It's still going. But this time, we didn't go out there on our own. We went with the glory. Mm -hmm. God, Father, in the name of Jesus, my God that worked for me, he ain't saved. But he know who I am. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, give us the wisdom, give us the direction to understand, to know what is what in this. I decree and I declare that we will resolve this problem today. He goes out. Guess what? He opens up the computer set. Bam! Motor! High pressure! He checks the motor. He cut it off and it come back on. The guy said, no, I don't believe that. Let it run. We're going to sleep. So he called me up. He said, I done documented everything. Took a picture. Thank God the cell phone. They got camera. I know that's right. Because you see, this guy is trying to attack my character. Mm -hmm. I understand what's happening. I know who, you know, who's involved. So, he leaves. I said, God, shut that unit down to show him what he needs to do. By the time my guy gets from his house to the office, it was shut down again. He called back and said, can you go get that motor? Mm -hmm. He go get the motor. He put it in. That was Thursday. We heard nothing else from it. Working like a charm. What is my point? I had to call on the supernatural ability of God, not my wisdom. My wisdom told me that it was Duke Energy shutting the system down. I talked to a profound engineer that created the unit, the manufacturer. They said, well, we agree with you. 
So what I had to do is go who? To the supernatural God. Yes, sir. And he told us. Yes, sir. And he gave us the victory. Yes. And then the man called, he said, well, Mr. Mr. Whitten, he don't call me Mr. Whitten, he called me Mr. Whitten. I can tell him my name, Whitten, I don't call him. He, he said, Mr. Whitten, <laughs> I thank you. You have some sharp guys. I know I made you a little frustrated, but you didn't show. He said, I know I'm going to need to change this unit because it's almost 12 years old, so what I'm going to start doing is start saving my money. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank, I'm going to call their name, one guy and thank the other guy. What are you saying that for, Apostle? Sometimes I don't care how much you think you know, you got to depend on the supernatural God to give you the answer. I had tried everything I knew. Do you understand that the enemy was trying to lay a trap where this man could go to the bad business field? This man could go to this. He could go to that. And he could drag your name through the mud. But because of the supernatural God, because of my obedience, just think about living to that man like the natural man or me would get ready to do. You have to listen to the still small voice. Mm -hmm. You have to listen to the voice of God. Yeah. God has purpose for you in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Can I touch you? Huh? You, you should. You should. You want to be free? Hmm. Come in, Noel, and, and pass the No, 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 no. I don't know why God just said, you stand with him. God just said, Yes. 